Nine was gardening by lamplight when Gwyn found her. She was wearing her sun hat and a bright purple cardigan. The sky was dark and frost had begun to sparkle on the ground. It's a bit late for that, isn't it? said Gwyn, approaching his grandmother down the cinder path. I like to poke a few things about, she replied, just to let them know I've got my eye on them. Well, there's not much growing, Nine, Gwyn remarked. Not that you can see anything in this light. There's tattoos, she said defiantly, and heaved a plant out of the ground, scattering earth all over Gwyn's white trainers. Not satisfied with this, she shook the plant violently, and Gwyn sprang back, too late, to save the bottom of his new school trousers. Oh, heck, Nine, he cried. What did you do that for? I'll get a row. Well, why didn't you put your boots on, silly boy? She replied. There's mud all down the lane. I came for a chat, didn't I? How was I to know I'd be attacked by a mad woman? Ha <laughs> ha! Who's mad with young Gwyn? Nine loved being teased. You brought good news. Are you a magician then? Can't we go inside, Nine? Gwyn fingered the matchbox in his pocket. He did not want to confide under the stars someone could be listening out there in the dark. Come on then, we'll leave the plants to doze for a bit and have a cup of tea. Nine dropped her potatoes, shook out a purple cardigan and stamped across to the open back door. The inside of her house was like a bright bowl. All the corners had been rounded off with cupboards and bookcases. And under every item of furniture, there was a heap of jumble of books, bright clothes and exotic plants. The fronds of shawls, trailing leaves and garlands of beads festooned the furniture to such a degree that its identity could not easily be ascertained. The only source of light came from an oil lamp. And as this was partially obscured by a tall fern, the whole place had a wild, mystical air about it. Somewhere through the jumble, a kettle lurked, and soon this was whistling merrily, while Nine sang from behind the screen, embroidered with butterflies, and a canary chattered in its cage. Gwyn looked round for a vacant seat. There was nothing. What shall I do with the eggs, Nine? he called. How many? Gwyn counted the eggs nestled in a red woolly hat on the only armchair. Seven, he replied. Well, well, they've all been in here today then, and I never noticed. Nine chuckled to herself. Why do you let the hens in, Nine? Gwyn asked. They're such mucky things. Mam would have a fit. Huh. Your mam would have a fit if she looked under my bed, I expect. Nine giggled. But there's no need to go upsetting people for nothing. Bring the eggs out here. Gwyn held out his, the bottom of his jumper and gathered the eggs into it. He looked for his grandmother behind the screen, but she'd vanished. And so had the kitchen. There was only a narrow space between the rows of plants and metres of crimson velvet. He found the kettle on the windowsill and put the eggs in the green hat beside it. Nine did not seem to be short of hats, so he felt the eggs would be safe enough for the moment. However, she had not been known to wear two at a time, so he called out, Don't put your green hat on yet, Nine! His grandmother's head popped out from a gap in the velvet. Isn't it grand, she purred. I'm going to dance in it. The hat? Gwyn inquired. This silly boy! His grandmother stroked the crimson material. Where? he asked. Who knows? Nine, would you like, would you find yourself a cup of tea and then sit down and concentrate? I've got something to show you. Gwyn fingered the matchbox again. Was it in the wind? Nine asked. It was windy yesterday. I thought of you. Quick, a cup of tea. She withdrew her head and reappeared a moment later, carrying two enameled eggs. M mugs, sorry, two blue enamel mugs. One for you. 
No, thanks, Stein. His grandmother did not use conventional tea leaves. Her tea was made from nettles or dried roots. Sometimes it was palatable, but often it was not. Today, Gwyn preferred not to risk it. He waited until his grandmother had settled herself in the armchair and sipped her tea before he knelt beside her and took out the matchbox. He wanted her undivided attention for this revelation. Even so, he was unprepared for the exact ecstatic gasp that accompanied Nine's first glimpse of the spider. When he gently withdrew the lid, the tiny creature called, crawled onto his hand and glowing in the dark room, and Nine's eyes sparkled like a child's. How did it come? Her whisper was harsh was it, with excitement. In the snow, Gwyn replied. I thought it was a snowflake. It was the brooch, I think. I gave it to the wind, like you said, and this came back. So, Nine murmured triumphantly, you are a magician then, Gwyn, Gwyn. Just as I thought.